Hello, welcome to the grid system part three. And now we're gonna check if a player has won. Because in the previous video, we implemented the check-in and place piece method, which is this one right here. We could place a piece and it would check if the, place, the actual place that we're trying to place a piece was empty. If it was, then it would place it only. But there's no win condition. So we need to check for that. And then after that, we'll be implementing AI. So there's a couple of methods we're gonna need. So in the header, just put void check player has won. And when I say player, it means anyone that's placing a piece, whether it's one of two players, whether it's one, whether it's the, the actual user and the AI. Either way, we will be calling this method and it takes int turn so it knows who we're actually checking has won or not. And this will be called every single time we or the AI places a piece or basically when a piece is placed so we can check over the grid and see based on the new piece that's been placed, has somebody won. And only after that can we either go to the game over screen or continue playing. I'm gonna need another method called check three pieces for match and this is going to take a few parameters int x1 int y1 and we just need to copy and paste this so there's three instances of it so change this to an x2 change this to a y2 x3 and y3 now we're going to put int piece to check like so so what we're doing in here is checking if a particular row or column or a diagonal line matches for a particular player. And this will be called for all the different combinations within this method. The reason we are abstracting it out into a separate method is because there's, I believe, eight different ways that a player can win in tic-tac-toe. Therefore, we don't wanna be running the same code eight different times. We just wanna run it or like code it once and then just call that method several times wherever we need to. So if you go to your game state CPP, in here, before we can actually start coding these methods, we need to load the winning pieces for X and circle because we will actually be showing them now. So if you put X winning piece, that's what I'm gonna call it. You can call it whatever you want. And my file or my hash defined with X winning piece. Then for this is X circle winning piece. Circle winning underscore piece file path. So now that we've implemented the actual loading texture methods, we just need to scroll down to where we handle the input. And around here, we just need to encapsulate this with if the state is equal to plain, because if the user can't play if let's say AI is placing a piece or it's game over for whatever reason, we don't want to allow the user to call this method by well clicking on the grid anymore. So we just need to wrap this around state equals plane, but by default the state is equal to plane anyway, so we can start placing pieces initially. So if we start scrolling down, keep scrolling. And uh, you just want to go to where we actually did the check and place piece methods. Go to the final if statement. Before we change turns, we just want to do this. Check has player one. And we just provide turn. And we do the same here as well. So check has player one. And now we can actually implement the check as player one method. So scroll down do void game state check has player one and this is going to be int player or int turn whatever you want to call it i've just called it int player here and we're going to do check three pieces for match so we want to check for all the different potential winning combinations i've already worked this out it's zero zero one zero two zero and the piece to check will be the piece that's been placed pay, passed in i can duplicate this so there's eight instances of it so yeah there's eight instances and now we can start implementing the other different 
winning conditions and for this it's going to be one one two one for the third one it's zero two one two 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 and now it's going to be three zero so zero 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 one zero two one zero two for the fifth combination is one zero one 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 two for the sixth combination is two zero two one two two one two two for the seventh combination is zero zero one one two two and this is two zero one one and if you haven't guessed these obviously correspond to a particular grid space so this will be one grid space another grid space and another grid space so now if we scroll down what we want to do is just create a local variable called int empty num equals nine so this just is going to track how many empty spaces there are so we are simply going to do four int x equals zero while x is less than three x plus plus and we want to it's because we're iterating through the entire grid we need to do the same for y as well so y y plus plus now we need to check if if it's an empty space so empty space not equal to underscore grid array why isn't grid ah grid array is just like this grid array x y and now we're going to do empty num minus minus so if the actual grid space isn't equal to an empty space we're just going to do empty num minus minus and we'll be using that in a moment so now we need to check if the game is a draw and we know if it's a draw because empty num will be a zero because if this method is called like so and once we implement it we'll actually handle winning and if this does its code and it wins then none of this will really be concerned from our coding perspective so we're going to do if zero equals empty num and the state isn't equal to state one and it isn't equal to lose which is what we would be setting it to in the check three pieces for match method then the game state equals state underscore draw like so and now we're just going to do a quick check to see if the game is over aka if, if the state is draw draw lose or won and if it is we will show the game over here so we will just do if state underscore draw is equal to game state or state underscore lose is equal to game state or state underscore one is equal to game state and we're going to show game over and that's it in the show game over method we would implement the transition from this state to the next state but we'll be handling that in a separate video so now let's implement the check three pieces for match method so what we're going to do is void actually you know what to save some time if we go to the header file copy and paste this i've noticed that i haven't saved it oh that wasn't the save button that was the command a button which isn't what we want so first of all let's just select this copy it save it go to the game state cpp now here paste it here like so 
And now what we want to do is check if the piece to check is the one in the corresponding free grid spaces that we have passed in. So if piece to check equals grid array, I forgot to put game state here. If it equals grid array x1, y1, and we need to check it for the other two as well. So and 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 we just need to change this to x2, y2, 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 like so. If that is true, then the player has won, and we're going to do std string winning piece str, which we'll be using in a moment for setting the new texture. Then we're going to do if circle underscore piece equals the piece to check, then well, circle has won, therefore the winning piece string will equal whatever we set the name for our texture, which is circle winning piece. And now we can just copy and paste this into else. And this will be x winning piece. Now we just need to set the texture because we've already retrieved it into this variable right here based on this little condition to check who has won. And we would do grid pieces x1, y1 dot set texture, and this is going to be this underscore data assets dot get texture winning piece str. We just need to duplicate this and do this. For the other two spaces as well in the grid and this will change to x2 y2 y3 x3 and now the one last thing that we need to actually do is if player piece equals piece to check then the player has one therefore we will do game state equals state underscore one else game state equals state underscore lose and what I'm gonna do just as one little extra thing if we go back to the check play player has one method go all the way to the bottom it's gonna do std c out let's console out the game state so we can see it. it'll be a number which you can refer to your definition file and see what state it is in now we're ready to run Hopefully we get no compilation errors, which we didn't. Fantastic. And now play load up, click the play button. So now let's place a piece here. For to place a piece here, place one here, place it here, and I place it here. Circle places it there, and I place it here. Now that has one. I'm gonna try and place one here. I can't. And that is because I've won now. Click the pause button, click home. And actually, why does yeah that, that, that yeah that's fine actually. So if I try and win for circle now, let's see what happens. So if I put a circle here, put an X here, put a circle here, put an X here. Okay, that messed up. <laughs> they all turned to X's. So that's a bug. And let's have a look why that bug occurred. So we've got X winning piece. Circle winning piece, we've got X winning piece right here. So let me scroll up. Make sure that when we are, pa okay, we're passing in the turn here. That looks fine to me. Scroll up to where we actually loaded the assets, X winning piece and circle winning piece go to definitions both x win and circle win i'm going to rerun this a second 
go to home, rerun, if I place PC here, place PC here, place the PC here, ah, it's regardless of whether they are axes or circles. So now let's have a quick look on here. So we got eight zero X piece, circle piece. That looks okay. There's the a difference there. So what we need to do now is go to the game state dot cpp and where we do the actual check itself so check and place piece check player has one so we call in all of these I feel like we are missing something in here. So check three pieces for match. Okay, so we have the circle piece to piece to check. Actually, what we do need to do is handle it. If let's say it gets into this particular method right here, and then it calls the next one. So this should only be called if and and actually I'll enclose all of this in the next statement so if all of this is within this top level if statement so now what we need to do is actually check for the turn so if state I mean the state if state lose doesn't equal game state and and state one doesn't equal game state and and state draw doesn't equal game state then we can actually continue with this code so if you rerun it Play, place piece here, place one here, place one here, that's fine, place one here, place an X there, place a circle there. But we can still continue placing pieces. I'd, I've put equals instead of not equals. So now let me rerun it. That was just a little mistake on my part. And now let's click play. X, circle, X. It's still changing them all. If we're passing in the piece to check, piece to check equals that's why. It was nothing to do with this. So I can actually undo all of this. And I didn't increment this to Y3 and Y3 like so. So if we rerun this now. Click play, X, circle, X, fine so far, place a circle, place an X, place a circle, and I can no longer place pieces. Phew, that was just a little bug, but again, that was my problem. It was nothing to do with the code, so the code on GitHub is fine. Let me just close that. Don't really care about some mortgage payment spam. So, X, circle, X, pre X here, oh, that's the circle. For a x here, for a circle here, for a x here, and all the, the x ones are actually triggered. So that is it for actually checking for the win condition. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on my educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. And if you want to check out the source code, feel free. There will be a link with this video to GitHub, which will show you the source code from every video in this series. And as usual, Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.